Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Winnie Lubembe and our sign anchor tonight is Joyce Wairimu. Let's begin with some bit of politics and Deputy President William Ruto's allies have vowed to mobilize Kenyans in rejecting the second phase of Huduma number registration with claims it's being used to hoodwink Kenyans. Remarks by Ruto allies were however refuted by President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition chief Raila Odinga's allies who asked him to resign from his post if he cannot cope with the government operations. Our reporter Jeff Kaemba kicks us our bulletin this evening. Claims to rig 2022 general election have surfaced with the deputy president William Ruto's allies vowing to leave nothing to chance by protecting the vote. The deputy president William Ruto led his troops in Bumula in Bungoma County for a church harambe, kept cool as his lieutenants, raised wild allegations of plans by the government to use the Uduma number uh, to rig him out uh, two years to the polls. <laughs> Wanafanya <laughs> Ndiposa tuende mwelekeo wakusajiliwa mara ya pili. The remarks by the vocal members of the parliament comes after their counterparts in a media briefing in Nairobi claimed the second phase of Uduma number registration by the government is a scam that is only meant to hoodwink the Kenyans by using the system to alter the election with an intent of putting William Ruto at the corner even if he wins. Walikuja kwangu, walikagua na kuhesabu mpaka ngurue na kukuzangu. Sasa wale wenye mabanki wanafanya nini na ngurue na kukuzangu. Hiyo data ndiyo nasikia paso center. Wanatumia sasa kuyunganisha kuibia wa Kenya huju mainyingine. Venye watawaibia hii mambo ya referenda mbambayo tunashinikizwa. And that is why we have maintained and we continue to maintain our priorities as a country should be economic recovery and how to put back the livelihoods of millions of Kenyans. The legislators also hit out at Raila Odinga for not questioning the project's procurement process. Nyingi, mulichukua uduma namba ilikuwa 2018. Ile kakaratazi mulikuwa manapewa refu, bado muko nae? Yangu ilipotea kitambo. Yangu ilipotea kitambo. Na wa sasa ule alitengeneza huduma namba leo hii tunaambiwa ati wanakuja sasa huduma namba round tu <coughs> tusipate mkenya yote akienda tena kupajana usajili mara ya pili but in a quick rejoinder uh, President Uru Kenyatta and the opposition chief Raila Odinga's allies hit back at their rivals to substantiate uh, their remarks instead of placing the country into a panic mode. Because you cannot pretend that uh, you don't know what's going on when you send such young parliamentarians like KJ Ishungwa that the president, the president himself want eh, to steal elections. That's very bad. Uh, politician Stanley Livondo and former Makadara member of parliament Ruben Dolo asked Deputy President William Ruto to resign from his post, uh, which he believes has let the Kenyans down. Naomba, Deputy President, his serikali ni yake. Asipige serikali ambayo ambayo ilimfanya akakuwa deputy. Asitukane raisi, sasa akitukana raisi mbele ya vijana na vijana watafanya nini? 
The Huduma number project has already cost 7.7 .7 billion Kenyan shillings in its first and the second phases, and the government said it will roll out its final process in December. This one is expected to cost 9 billion Kenyan shillings. William Root has voted to be on the ballot come 2022 by the use of the hustler narrative. Siku nyingi mumetuambia nyinyi ndio mutapanga. Mumepanga ukabila. Mukapanga kugawana mamulaka nyinyi na watoto wenu. Safari hii hatuwezi kuwaruhusu mupange. Hawa mahasla. Hawa mamamboga hawa. Watu hawa makanga. Hawa waboda boda. Yule wabeba beba. Tutapanga safari hii na tutaunda serikali. Before the Uduma number process kicked off, a concerns were raised about its credibility of the company that was given the tender to supply the Huduma number kit, and also questions its relationship with the Independent Electoral and the Boundaries Commission IBC. Concerns were also raised on the provision that will allow Kenyans to change their personal data captured in the Uduma number database. A reporter for Ebru TV, I'm Jeff Haemba. All right, thank you, Jeff, for that. Now, a survey released by one of the leading research companies in the country has ranked the best performing member of parliament with first time MPs overshadowing long term serving MPs. And of course, Emuhaya member of parliament, Jeremiah Omboko Milemba, leads the list as the best performing members of parliament, a rank that seems to add vital points in his basket as the country nears the 2022 general elections. Kind of Stefano with more. The report has placed Muhaya MP Jeremiah Amboko Miremba as the best performing MP at 75.4%, followed by Emurwa Dikir MP Johanna Ngeno, who comes second with 71.4%. A few weeks ago, Ngeno was allegedly arrested for utterances that were found insightful, but his performance at the constituency level seems appealing, according to the report. Mwala MP Vincent Musio Kamusau, a.k.a. Kawaya, is that with 70.8% performance index. In central region, Kabete MP James Gedua has performed the best according to the report at 66.5%. In Rift Valley, Samburu has the best performing MP. Samburu East MP Lentoi Johnny Lekomuntare is leading with 58.0%. MP's performance index indicates that Ombiko Milemba of Umuhaya has 75.4%, Emirwadikir MP Johanna Ngeno ranked second with 71.4%, Vincent Musioka Kawaya 70.8%, Christopher Aseke Wangaya is at position 4 with 70.0% performance among others. In this ranking, there is top five women MPs, led by Taveta MP Naomi Shaaban, who scored 61.6%, followed by Edith Nyenze of Kitui West, with percentage of 58.4%. Naisula Lesuda is third, and Maragua's Mary Njoroge is fourth, while Aisha Jumwa is the fifth best performing woman MP. Youth MPs are also in this release, and Didmas Baraza of Kimilili, leads the pack of the best performing youth MPs with 66.5%, Joshua Kavenda Kimilu of Kaiti with 61.9%, and Nicholas Mwale of Butere is third with 58.1%. The research has also captured the best performing women representatives. According to the report, Buyu Rosa Akinyi of Kisomo is in the lead with 61.5%, followed by Gladys Wanga of Homabe and Obo Roweida of Lamu with 61.0 and 60.0% respectively. Kaindo Stefano for Ebro TV. And Waitan community in Mandera County have decried government alienation in development agenda. The community, which on Sunday elected their spokeswoman to champion for their agenda, vowed to mobilize their community by voting out leaders who have betrayed them after being elected. In a media briefing after their ceremony at Isli here in Nairobi, the women promised to work harmoniously with elected leaders, at least to bring sanity in their respective constituencies that are said to have have lagged behind. Mama, atutaki wakati tunasema tunataka kuenda kwa raisi 
tunapitia mzee, tunapitia kabila, tunaambiwa tafuteni governor, tunaambiwa tafuteni senator. Tunataka rais atukubali vile tulimpigia kura. Ndiyo tunaweza kumwona kwa hiyo ofisi kila mara wakati tunataka kumwona rais wetu. Na let's help the wamama and to prosper so if you want to ask to prosper. Tufute mani kwa njia yote kwa jirani yetu kwa eni yote. Na sisi pia kina mama tunataka tuna support serikali yetu na wazee yetu na kina ugaz na mheshimiwa yote tunafanya kazi pamoja. Bia kina mama tunataka tushirikiane tu, kina mama wale iko na shida wale iko mototo yake babane yao wamekufa na wale yatima ndo tushirikiane pamoja ili tutufute serikali yetu kwa njia yote ili tupatane msaidi si aine yote kwa sababu mambo ya kura sisi ndo tuko nguvu bia tunafanya kazi pamoja na sisi tunaomba rais yetu please Please tunaomba wacha asikie. Please aone watu wetu kina mama. Please aone. Ndio tuone watu wetu ya shida kina mama ya shida. Ndata tunaweza ona wasichana wengi amesoma daraja fulani na hakuna mtu anaandika kasi. And away from politics now, the Kenya Medical Association has called upon the Ministry of Education to provide the evidence that the risk of transmission is eliminated or significantly reduced before reopening schools in a bid to ensure safety of the learners. Kenya Medical Association President Were Onyino says educational institutions will need to ensure learners have access to health services in case they fall ill should any outbreak occur in school. As preparations for gradual school reopening gains momentum, with teachers expected to report to work from Monday, health workers have raised concerns over the government preparedness against COVID-19. The Kenya Medical Association, led by its president, Dr. Were Onyino, has asked the government to ensure Kenyans of its preparedness to handle any potential surge in transmission that might result from reopening. We also need to get information uh, from the community uh, initiative, uh, whether community transmission has been elim eliminated significantly so that uh, we can allow our children to go back to school because we believe uh, our children uh, are the future for this country and they need to be protected. They have also recommended that the Ministry of Education hires health workers in learning institutions designated to take care of learners should they fall ill. As we speak now, uh, it's not clear because the testing uh, that has been done cannot provide uh, the necessary information uh, for us uh, to actually open the country. Lack of enough PPEs also remains a challenge as health workers hustle to access adequate quality PPEs for their use during work. Viwango vya afya na usalama kazini nchini bado vinabadilika na wanafanyikazi wa afya katika county zingine bado hawajapata vifaa vya kinga binafsi PPE They have also expressed their dissatisfaction towards the recent political gatherings held in disregard of COVID-19 rules uh, I'm sure you have seen videos going around of people uh, going back to their party lives you have seen uh, politicians uh, uh, holding even yesterday rallies uh, and this sends a very negative and bad message uh, our politicians need to provide leadership if you are to be able to control uh, this pandemic. So we like to urge the politicians, it's not an emergency to hold uh, the political rallies that you're holding. This comes as President Uhuru Kenyatta on Monday is expected to address the nation on what steps and measures his administration will be putting in place to reopen the country. The address comes in the wake of high expectations from Kenyans that some of the restrictions to prevent the spread of coronavirus will be lifted to pave way for a full resumption of the economy. Kenya has been on a partial lockdown since March when the first case of coronavirus was confirmed. Busara Naman for Ebru TV. Now, the school administration of Ngala Memorial Girls Secondary School in Kilifi County has devised ingenious ways to accommodate all the over 1,000 students when schools reopen next month. School principal Elizabeth John says the school would use some of the classrooms as dormitories, while tents would be erected to be used as classrooms to ensure social distancing with a view to preventing COVID-19 infections. Speaking at the Extra County School, the school principal said the institution was ready for reopening, 
since the Board of Management teachers has been in school throughout the coronavirus period to assist in non-teaching staff in keeping the school tidy and habitable. Our teachers have started reporting. These teachers were on duty even before they were requested to, to report, both the BOM teachers and uh, uh, the TSE teachers. Uh, so uh, we, we, I still have some of them within the school compound right now. Some have already left. So uh, tomorrow we'll also have another group. And on Monday, all of them will be in school. By Friday, a number of teachers employed by Teacher Service Commission TSC it also reported in readiness for reopening of schools two days after the teacher's employer directed the tutors to report to their respective workstations by Monday this week. Due to the coronavirus protocols, each of the already constructed classrooms will accommodate 20 students and one teacher, which means the half of students will not be able to learn inside world classrooms. I can handle maybe uh, 300 students, but handling like uh, a thousand students at a go, it will be a challenge. And uh, uh, face reopening, I mean we can have our candidate class first, and maybe after two weeks, because I know that why, when, once these students are in school, they are safe. So after maybe two weeks or a month, then we can have the other class coming in. Maybe after a month or so, then we can have the other. The school was also constructing a new dormitory that is expected to accommodate 150 students. A contractor had already been awarded the tender for the project and workers were busy clearing trees to pave way for the construction works. Uh, the rules and the regulations about the COVID-19 or social distance and water view. The, maybe we can test for with a few, maybe the form four and form three maybe, so that we can see if it is workable, we can uh, do, admit the others. Tunashukuru kwa sababu mipangilio ya shule ilikuwa ime jita hidi kutenga pesa kwa ajili ya wafanyaji kazi. Kama kawaida mbo tunajua makusanyo ya pesa ya kipatika na kuna kile kitengo cha mishahara. Kwa hivyo kilikuwa kisha tengwa kwa ajili ya wafanyaji kazi. Iwapo kilikuwa kiko chini lakini kwa sababu sasa mambo mengi yalikuwa yamesimama uh, tukachukua sehemu ya zile pesa ambazo zilikuwa za matumizi mengine na zikaendelea kutusaidia kupata mshahara. Davis Mberia, Ebru News. And Kenya has reported 244 more cases of COVID-19, bringing the total to 38,115. In a statement to newsrooms, the health ministry says the new cases were out of a sample size of 3,707 that was tested uh, in the last 24 hours. Out of the new cases, 228 are Kenyan, 16 are foreigners, with 157 being males and 87 females. The youngest in the new cases is a three month old infant while the oldest is 85 years old 40 people have been discharged bringing the total number of recoveries to 24,621 unfortunately two more people have succumbed to the disease bringing the total number of deaths to 691 Now, a land row in Naivasha has left scores of people, including a 14-year-old boy nursing gunshot and machete injuries, with the police accused of taking sides in the dispute. This follows a night of terror in Moy Ndabi village, 50 kilometers from Naivasha town, where one group attacked the other, leaving several of them injured. Following the incident, Tension was high in the village that is home to tens of the victims of the 1992 Enospukia post-election violence. Hours later, police arrived in one of the compounds to arrest a suspect only to shoot his son on the leg, seriously injuring him. According to a local leader, Jen Wanjiru, the problem was caused by a double allocation of the land by the Department of Lands. Jiru accused the police of taking sides in the dispute, noting that some of the powerful persons were behind the latest violence outbreak. 
tunalilia serikali yetu tukufu iingilie kati isaidie tu kutatua hii shida tujue ni wakati mgani serikali ilipeana ila serikali ilipeana 1994 kuna wakati kulikuja kukaa kuna skimu mpya ili naye hiyo serikali bado iendelee ipeane tena mashamba mwaka wa 209 hii hizi makaratasi mbili zilipeanwa namna gani ili wale ambao wamekalia hii mashamba wajue kwa hakika kama kuna haki katika iliyotendewa wananchi wa kawaida This was echoed by Purity that year who claimed that her son was shot as police moved in to arrest her husband over the clashes. Tulikuwa tunaishi huko juu sasa tukakuja tukashika mashamba. Sasa wakati tulishika mashamba ilikuja tu ikauswa na tu kujua imeuswa. Sasa wakati tulikuja kujenga nyumba ya kwanza juu ilikuwa mahali pale ilikuja ikabomolewa ikapeleka face one. Ya pili ikabomolewa tena tukajenga tena ikabomolewa ikapeleka tena face one. Ya tatu tukakuja tukajanga ikabomolewa mabati ile mabati ikabebwa tukaekelea mnyore sasa baka kukuja kubomoa hiyo mnyore mm. she said that they settled on the land in 1994 adding that they were in shock when another family came in 10 years later claiming the same parcel of land a village elder Daniel Kiritu said that he stood with the victims of the shot boy and called on senior government officers to intervene jirani wetu hapa hapa ndiye amekuwa broka mkuu na wanaenda wanachukua anaitwa Daniel Pareyo hapa 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 na hata kama angekuwa hapo ningemwambia na kila mtu anamjua akishikana na local administration kutoka sub chief kutoka chief mkubwa ofisi ya, ya land ya Naivasha hiyo ni chaini moja na hakuna njia nyingine inaweza kufanyikana ni serikali tu na kama serikali tu itakubali tuumie waja tufe sasa vile vile hiyo siasa alikuja na maskari wengine wengine walikuwa hapa hivi hawakuona mzee vile alienda sasa siasa alimkuta tu hiyo e, kijana peke yake akilala kwa nyumba akilala hapo hapo chini sasa vile amemkuta ni ni, ni wao askari wenyewe wa kongoni walimbeba vile mzee alikuwa anataka kutolewa sasa watu wakakuwa wengi sasa waki wakifurutana ndani ya nyumba sasa sisi tumestokia tu kijana amepigwa risasi na ni risasi kabisa tumeona Speaking on phone, Ivasha OCPD Samuel Baweru denied being aware of the shooting incident but promised to investigate the matter. Dolly Mirigi, Ibru TV. And a community-based organization in Kabujoi Ward, Nandi County, has put a smile on the face of the elderly after constructing 20 houses for them. According to the foundation's patron, Edwin Kipkemboy Arap Magut, their aim is to ensure that the lives of the less fortunate in the society is uplifted. <laughs> sasa bala mchana nikiwa kwa kwangu naye baba watoto walikuja tukafurugana akanigongolea hapa hivi naye hapo ikafura na maji ikaanza kulia maji ikatoa maji naye wakati huo nikakuja nyumbani naye hao wakakuja kunifuatilia nikarudi mali pale mwezi wa sita ilikuwa mwezi wa pili nikianziwa hiyo mwezi wa sita kwa hiyo mwaka and madam Evelyn Mutai na akanichukua akanipeleka upande wa sapacha e, tukaenda daktari akaenda akaona hakupata chochote kwa macho changu nikaandikiwa barua nipeleke Eldoret scan na hizo mabarua nikakuja yule mtu akaificha baba watoto the coming two years we would have identified everybody who has a disability within our ward and also those who need financial assistance in school and also the elderly and also those ladies and men whom are not in good financially so that we can see what we can do if they have children those who are supposed to be taken to school mom is a sick person we have come to see to visit him uh -huh. and uh, we realized after identifying this mom that 
she is living in a house which is not in good condition. So we have just decided to uplift her. All right, and just like that, we conclude the Every TV Primetime News on this 27th day of September 2020, just a few days before we say goodbye to the month of September. So I hope that you make good use of the remaining days. My name is Winnie Lubemba, wishing you a lovely night and a restful one at that. And not forgetting, on behalf of an amazing, amazing team who put together this bulletin, and of course, on behalf of our sign anchor tonight, Joyce Wairimu, wish you a lovely night. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for my doctor. And until then, as always, stay safe and God bless.